right, let's go then. Um, Order of Wilsonville City Council meeting for May 4, 2020 at uh, 7.04 p.m. and request a roll call, please. Councilor Linville? Here. Councilor West? Here. Council President Ackerval? Here. Councilor Lehan? She said Mayor Knapp? Present. Can the uh, people in the chamber lead us in a Pledge of Allegiance, please? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, please the council, I'm open to a motion on order of agenda. Councilor West, you're muted. You're still? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Now I can. Your Honor, I move to approve the order of agenda. As amended. Thank you. Is there a second? Yeah, that's amended. Councilor Linville, uh, second. All in favor, please say, please raise your hand. Aye. I'm seeing five hands and five nods. Uh, passes unanimously. Um, bringing us to mayor's business on upcoming meetings. I don't even know what to say about upcoming meetings because uh, like uh, many of us, uh, from what I understand, it seems like my days are filled with more Zoom conferences than I ever thought would exist. <laughs> uh, in fact, to the point that they're just not, it's not possible to participate in all of them. Uh, many people that are in Washington, D.C. or in Salem uh, are, uh, jumping on Zoom uh, communications, and there are just so many that it's, it's very difficult. Uh, at the same time, uh, some of the conferences are important to kind of stay current on what's happening. Uh, I did participate in a mayors and chairs uh, conference uh, uh, on Zoom with Clackamas County electeds and other mayors and uh, city managers from around Clackamas County. Uh, we had a very uh, robust and interesting discussion. And there are some of the rural cities in Clackamas County that are uh, anxious to reopen their business sector uh, in shorter time frame than than the metro area has uh, in mind, and it's uh, it's an interesting dialogue. Uh, the complexity is that a lot of the people that live in those communities commute into the greater Portland metro area to work or to transact business. Uh, therefore, uh, earlier opening in some of our rural cities would have an effect on our metro cities at the same time. So there's no real easy answers, uh, but the dialogue is going on, and I think everyone has gotten clear that the governor's order is going to prevail and have to uh, take precedence and that she has legal authority to be doing uh, the, the uh, orders that she has uh, done, the different executive orders, you know, in response to the pandemic crisis. So it's uh, dialogue that I think that we will hear more of as we go forward. And it, it's important that we understand the complexities of the, the uh, medical side of it, I guess, uh, and the different factors that are going into the the uh, political judgment about, you know, where the right balance is between uh, getting the economy moving when we can and how we can at the same time uh, trying to not create a new rush of, of uh, infections with the coronavirus. So uh, there's no answer that I can see, you know, to any of that right now. Um, we will 
all be in for more of those dialogues before we get uh, to where we really can say that we're ready to reopen the economy. So uh, that's my only observation, I guess, about upcoming meetings. Uh, we do have next council meeting, which I should probably take note if I could find where it was. Hey, Mayor. Yes. Can I save you a, a calendar look there? We have nothing uh, okay. we have nothing for the regular meeting we have two items for work session that can absolutely be moved to june 1st so unless you have any objections i've already directed staff to push those to june 1st there's no sense in having a meeting just for a work session unless that's something you want to do right 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 um that makes sense i think council does it make sense to you the 50 states of the United States. Yeah, yeah I'm saying council agreeing pretty much. Um, did you have, uh, I guess the other thing that uh, the city manager had asked is whether any of the council had concerns about the uh, upcoming consent agenda for tonight or whether those staff might be turned loose if there are no uh, questions uh, with regard to the uh, engineering services for the wastewater treatment plant master plan uh, update. Are there going to be any questions uh, on that that's currently on consent, uh, or are we going to let the staff go on that at the moment? I have no questions. Okay, I, not, I have no questions. Uh, not seeing any questions, Mr. Cosgrove. I think that you can let uh, any that's there just for the consent agenda item. Uh, have their leave if they would like. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, we don't have any formal communications at this point. Do we have any citizen uh, uh, communications either uh, in the room or on video, Mr. Cosgrove? Mayor, we actually do have, you should have an amended agenda where we added uh, Wilsonville Small Business COVID-19 grant program update. If you didn't get that, um, Amended agenda. I think it was, I think we sent it out. Sorry. But if it's on email, it's not on my iPad and it's not on my desktop. So let me let me look. <laughs> I apologize. We did. I think we sent out the amended agenda. Um, and there there are there's nobody in the chambers or the virtual chambers looking to talk to council. Okay. Uh, so at this point, uh, then under communications, we have the Wilsonville Small Business Grant Program update from staff scheduled, and I think that we all are anxious to hear about that. Well, if here we go. The right Mr. Van. Discussion. <clears throat> right. Are you guys going to talk about what each of you is going to be doing? Yeah, okay. I have a slide on that. Thank you. All right, good evening, Council. My name is Jordan Vance, Economic Development Manager, and I'm excited to be here to provide an update on the COVID relief grants results. So this program has moved very- Good evening. We're all listening, even though we can't see you. <laughs> okay, you can see the presentation. Yes, we can see the, the screen share, yeah. Okay. So you will recall this program was adopted two, two weeks ago. Uh, we were given direction by council to implement a relief grants program for home-based, micro, and small businesses. Uh, we had a very uh, rapid timeline to, to implement. Um, so we, we launched the application on Friday, April 24th, and it was open until Wednesday uh, the 29th. So it was open for about six full days. And we did an enormous amount of marketing in a very short period to try to make this as equi equitable as possible to give everyone a fair shot at applying. Uh, so we sent a postcard to every address, both residential and business in the city. Uh, staff at City Hall made a phone call to 680 businesses uh, that we pulled from our business license list. They were all businesses that had under uh, 20 full-time employees that may qualify for the program. So we, did, we conducted individual calls and then followed up with a personalized email with a link to the program. And so I think that was a really successful uh, campaign and we refreshed about 200 new email contacts for our small business uh, listserv, which was good. 
Uh, we sent two email blasts out to all of our business license um, email recipients, to property owners, to, our, to all our small businesses, which reached about 600 businesses. Uh, we sent out a media release that was published uh, in the newspaper, uh, social media posts, and we know the chamber is also promoting to their audiences. Uh, and then we did offer um, a bilingual application and program overview uh, pages. So here's kind of the top line results from the, uh, from the program. We received about 279 applications. Um, I was actually a little surprised by this number. I initially thought it was gonna be much higher given that the pool of candidates um, is 680 just in Wilsonville. Uh, but it appeared to me that, that candidates were self-selecting and um, if they didn't meet the criteria based on employee count or other uh, requirements, they weren't submitting an application. So from these 279 applications, 200 of those met the mandatory eligibility criteria, which is about three quarters, and then 79 uh, right off the bat did not meet the mandatory criteria, so about a quarter. So with the initial goal that council set out uh, to achieve, which was dispersing around 159 grants, um, theoretically with these numbers, we could fund uh, about 80% of the eligible uh, applications that came in, which seems like an encouraging number. So uh, we initially said the only thing, we would be verifying uh, business license data the city has on hand. Uh, so through that data, we were able to verify um, active business licenses that were obtained before March 1st, uh, claims about full-time employees based on their 2019 active license, and then longevity claims about how long a business has been operating uh, in good standing in the city of Wilsonville. So through, uh, through this process with finance, we audited about 58 applications uh, and found that 16 were uh, either inactive or obtained after that March 1 timeframe. Uh, we found there were some um, different um, responses on full-time employee count, and that may, some of that may have been due to confusion. Um, some employees may have been giving us a post-COVID employee count that was lower than the number that their 2019 uh, business license reported. So we corrected, um, we, re we corrected results based on the data we have on hand. And then lastly, the longevity claims, we corrected 17 of those. So businesses saying they were here for five years and they were actually here for three. So we corrected based on the number we had on file for um, years of, they've had an active business license with the city. Uh, so here's a chart showing the top reasons uh, for uh, ineligibility. The first one was um, disqualification based on home-based business criteria that the council established. So if the applicant identified at, in the home-based business track, which was zero to uh, two full-time employees, um, they had to say no to the, this following question to qualify that said that their business operated from their personal residence and they provided more than solely services or goods sold online via the internet. So that was 41 businesses um, that disqualified for that reason. Uh, 16 because of business licenses, because they're either inactive or obtained after the March 1 date. Uh, eight businesses didn't qualify because they're above the 20 full-time employee mark. Some self-selected that and some we audited through our verification process. Uh, six businesses we had no record of. Um, uh, five had no physical structure, so they said they didn't have a uh, personal residence or a brick and mortar that they operated their business from. Uh, there was about nine incomplete applications total. So for all incomplete applications, we notified the applicants and gave them a window to reapply. Uh, most all of those did except for one, um, but some people would forget to certify that and, and add their signature at the end of the application. And then lastly, uh, one business said they weren't experiencing disruption due to COVID. Um, and that was one of the main purposes of this grant program, of course, was businesses that were negatively impacted and had a loss of revenue due to the COVID crisis. So here's a spread of the uh, industry types for all applications. So this is not just eligible, but this is all of the 279 applications that came in. Um, we know the pool, so as a reminder, 
Uh, TLT is funding hospitality businesses, which is food and beverage, recreation, entertainment, lodging, and urban renewal is funding general businesses, which is a much broader category. So retail, uh, professional, personal services, um, healthcare, et cetera. So we know the pool of hospitality businesses in Wilsonville is much smaller. Um, there's about 60 total restaurants and 77 overall hospitality businesses. Um, so out of that group, we saw about 46 applications, which went into the TLT funding category, um, which was much lower than the general business category, which received about 233 applications. Um, many in the healthcare medical category, uh, as well as um, services and other. So services included categories like cosmetic, uh, professional, personal services, real estate, um, other was a wide range of business types, which include, included fitness, interior design, video production, childcare, janitorial, automotive, photographer, massage therapist, security, et cetera. So after I separated the eligible from the ineligible businesses, I applied points to all of the applications for the weighted criteria uh, which is a reminder were the additional considerations to help determine tiebreakers, um, including factors like business longevity, business certifications, and prioritizing businesses that hadn't already received relief funding. So I applied points for each criteria and then ranked the list in descending order, which yielded uh, this result, with the highest score being seven points and the lowest at zero. So you can see the bulk of the businesses were in the mid-range uh, with, with three to four points. So this is that same, uh, same chart in a, in a graph here. Um, so you'll see the businesses with the highest points um, were prioritized for funding. So for, for hospitality businesses, TLT was able to fund all 38 eligible businesses um, with a $57,000 surplus. For general businesses, for which there were 162 eligible applicants. Quick time out. So council, we've just been told that uh, we need to reset our YouTube channel. So we need to ask for a five minute, 10 minute break here real quick. We're not broadcasting live. Okay, do we stay online? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Just don't, just don't. All right, so. I'll work with you. Shall we take a 10 minute recess? Is that what you want? Uh, hopefully, Five, 10. hopefully 10, give me 10. Okay, 10 minutes is what I'm being told. Hopefully sooner. Though. Okay, 10 minute recess. I will call us back at uh, 7.33. Sorry, Jordan, you need to break your flow. No worries. <laughs> And we're back. Hey, we will reconvene at 7.51 p.m. Uh, I see, uh, do I see everyone? I see, come on, I can't make my thing move here. Where's Ben? Is Ben in there? He is All right, there. we've got the full council here. Uh, and we are in the midst of hearing a report from Mr. Vance with regard to the Small Business Grant Program. Uh, Mr. Vance, are you ready to take it back up? Yes, I am. Uh, Mayor, are you all right if I pick up where I left off, or would you like me to start from the beginning again? Uh, I think we have a technical question there of how much might have been missed with the technical problem. Can someone on staff advise? Yeah, so it's... Everything that we've done up until the glitch occurred has been recorded and will be rebroadcast. It just didn't go out okay. live. So we could pick back up where you were, Mr. Vance, on the scoring results graph? Yes. All right, okay. that sounds great. Thank you, Mayor. So, um, as I was saying, the, uh, here's the initial cut of the scoring results. Um, I scored all of the eligible businesses and we had um, put them in descending order and the top score was seven points and went all the way down to zero. So here is the allocation, those point allocations on a chart here. Um, 
So with the TLT funding, uh, it funded all 38 eligible hospitality businesses and left us with a remaining uh, $57,000 surplus. Uh, so with urban renewal, uh, for general businesses, um, for which there were 162 eligible applicants, um, the Urban Rule funded uh, point categories four to seven, which is 69 businesses, and it runs out midway through the point category three with $38,000 remaining. So the staff recommendation is to lottery off the remaining $38,000 balance to the remaining to the businesses in this point category of which there are 51 total. So here's the final grant relief allocation excluding the lottery amount. So you'll see that we have 41 TLT businesses once we add in the three Clackamas County hotels. Uh, there weren't as many home-based hospitality businesses in this category, which wasn't a surprise. Um, for general businesses, we have 69 selected for a total of 110 businesses and about 305,000 in funding. Um, and then if you add the TLT surplus in the URA lottery, we get to the original budget of $400,000. So here's those same numbers in a different format to show the different tiers of grants and then also to compare it to our uh, initial goals that council established two weeks ago. Uh, so the targets uh, in my mind were always a little bit fluid given we can't predict the quantity and the quality of applications that will come in under each tier. So you can see we're a little under on the home-based and micro-business categories and we're pretty close for uh, for small business, and the lottery, lottery will probably give us 10 to 20 more businesses, which will bring the grand total to around 120 to 30 grants uh, dispersed and around $343 dispersed. So the lottery process that we recommend um, is we first created an alphabetized list of all of the 51 businesses that were in the point three category and assigned each one of those a number between one and 51. So I've emailed this same list to the city attorney and city manager so that it is, it is verified and timestamped. With Google random number generator, we can set a range between one and 51 and it will select randomized numbers for us to help determine the grant candidates at random. As we pick Google random numbers, we will identify the grant winner and subtract the amount from the re remaining $38,000 balance until it runs out. And if there is an odd balance that remains for the final grant number, uh, we'll give as much as we can to the final recipient. For example, if we have $3,000 left and it's a $4,000 grant, we'll give that uh, remaining amount to that recipient. Do you want to pause and see if there's any questions there? Uh, sure. Well, this is actually the end of the um, presentation. Okay. So, um, quick timeline. So, tonight we uh, recommend uh, proceeding with the lottery, and we have the link ready to go, um, and a colleague to, to help me um, facilitate this. Uh, so, following that, we'll have communication that will go out to all applicants, uh, notifying applicants of their status, and then shortly following that, uh, we'll have checks going out. So, we recommend... We, uh, acknowledge the tremendous urgency around this initiative, and so there's uh, many staff working to get this out as fast as we can. Uh, so that concludes the presentation. Um, we can open it up for questions, and then after that, move into the, the lottery process. Okay, uh, are the communications gonna be voice, email? What, what's your plan? Uh, so uh, email notification to all applicants. Email notification, okay. All right, council, any questions about the protocol that uh, staff is, uh, has described and is proposing to move forward with? Councilor Linville. Um, Jordan, I just wondered um, wh when, it, when will the communication go out and when do you anticipate the checks will go out? So I think we'll be in a position to move this week. Um, I think today or tomorrow we should be able to send out a communication. Um, finances said they should be able to get checks checks out this week. So if all goes Thank to plan, you. that's the, the we've we've uh, put a project plan in place today, but we believe we can execute on this this week. 
Okay, other questions? Councilor Linville. I'm just wondering if, um, I'm just wondering if it might be um, possible to consider a second round of the same grant funding since we have money left in the TLT, um, if we might just go out one more time uh, with the same same parameters, same issues, um, and just um, ask, just ask, just let businesses know that there there is funding for an, uh, a round, you know, a second round, and and um, then um, the possibility that we could then um, some some businesses that might have not um, applied might apply. Councilor West. Can you hear me now? Yes. Um, for clarification, um, so the funds would need, we couldn't change the parameters because we've already voted on that, am I correct? We couldn't tweak any of that. We need to sit within the framework we've already decided. Am I understanding that correctly? And they can do anything they want. I mean, if they want to amend or add or change, but we'd have to add it under new business. Well, one of the issues you have, of course, is that the uh, transportation and lodging tax was committed to go to those types of businesses. So you would, I would think you would want to s stay with that. And then, you know, or the other option is to save those funds for recovery and use it for promoting those p businesses as they get back into business. So yep. use, it, use it for that purpose, um, but not award it. The problem with amending it now is that we've gone through a very elaborate, transparent process. So tweaking it or amending it, which you could do, um, I don't know how that'd be perceived by the, by the public. That's my, my biggest concern is public perception. I'm going out for a second round. There's so if we had the... Go ahead. Oh, if we had the money to include all the hotels now, because we had extra left over, um, could that be, we, I'm just wondering if we'd want to consider that, or do we want to just put out a second round to everybody that's already been within the framework, or even Barbara's idea about making it for promotional dollars if it doesn't get used. But we did have people that stressed and testified that they really could and, and would did want the funds, but they did not qualify. So maybe now we relook at that. Uh, I guess that that's a possible. I would ask the council to also think about the fact that there remains a lot of uncertainty going forward. We don't know what the economic situation is going to be 30 days from now, 60 days from now. And uh, there may well be highly desirable things to do to help the economy start rolling again if we have funds available to do that. So that would be another, another possibility. Um, I saw a question from Councilor Eckerval. Yeah, I wondered um, if Jordan Vance could go back to the presentation, the one slide that you kind of notated out. Um, I think you said there was, it was like one or two people that didn't quite submit the application or they, they completed it, but they didn't submit. I wondered if you could fill out what the story is on that one. Yes, I'm happy to. Can you see my screen? Oh, certified, maybe, was that? Certified. Yeah, okay, sorry. Um, Please go ahead, so sorry. This was, this was actually a technical glitch with SurveyMonkey. Um, it was a required field that applicants had to certify their application and sign it and um, agree to a disclosure that said everything they're submitting is accurate. 
and we, sa uh, we, we said we would not consider applications that weren't complete. <clears throat> For some reason, a couple applications came in that weren't certified, and when we did user testing internally, we, we couldn't encounter that problem because it would flag the application when we tried to submit. But still, there was a handful that were lacked a certification, so we followed up with all of those before the deadline and said, we, we, your application was incomplete, would you like to resubmit it if you want to be considered for a grant? And all of those uh, did except for, for one. Okay. And, uh, one, you weren't able to have communication with the um, applicant or one, they just, you had the communication and, the, and they didn't elect to certify? The latter. Okay. Okay, I was, I was just curious, because thinking of um, Councillor Lindell's suggestion that we could open it back up, I thought, well, um, you know, clearly maybe those people had intent of trying to submit a, a full application and it would be worth finding out what happened there. But it sounds like that has already all occurred. That's right. Okay, thanks for the clarification. Councillor Lehan. <laughs> no audio. No. You don't hear me now? Now we can. Okay. Well, I, my question is about the restaurants. Um, uh, how much was were they allotted? Do we have, do we have that? They, I know they're in the TLT um, category. It would depend on the number of employees, right? Number of employees. So how many are, are in the two categories or three categories, whatever we have, two categories of employees for restaurants? Mm -hmm. And how, how much was that? In other words, did, are, are they getting two thousand dollars, five thousand dollars? Was it two thousand and four thousand, or what was it? So the one thousand dollar grants were only for home-based businesses. So restaurants would have right. fallen into one of two buckets: micro enterprise for two thousand, or small business for four thousand. So are you asking right. how many grants we so, gave to, to restaurants? Right. Uh, in that two thousand and four thousand dollar bucket, how, how many are there? Uh, let me pull up my, uh, I don't have that number segmented, but I can get that for you. So from our applications, 40, uh, so the majority went to restaurants. The, um, 40 of the 46 applications were food and beverage. Right. So the majority went well, to restaurants. I, I don't I mean, have the exact number, but I can get that to you following this meeting. Seem to me that a consideration would be to boost that number, either the 2,000 or the 4,000 or both of them, because restaurants have taken a, a big hit, um, almost almost across the board. Um, that it would be easier to do that rather than open up a whole new criteria. Having said that, I mean, that's what I would do if I thought we had extra money that we wanted to just push out there. But having said that, I will also say what I did before, and the reason I did not apply, even though I would qualify. And now I have had all of July and August uh, cancel on me. So, uh, but I had said before, the reason I didn't apply is I thought that, that it was important that some portion of those TLT funds go to what they were always intended for, and that is to market for TLT, for, I mean, for the hospitality industry. And, uh, and I think as we try to come out of this, that's what they're going to need because no one's going to just show up at your hotel um, without a reason to come there. So it would seem to me that if we have extra money 
A, I would look at the restaurants. B, I would say, let's hold it for those event things that attract uh, people who stay in your hotels. Uh, that would be like the, uh, the Dahlia Festival or various fairs and things that go on in the valley that, that uh, attract people who come here, the, the uh, country classic, all of those kinds of things. It would be to look at, at is there a way either this season or into the fall season that we could push some of those funds into promoting those events that draw visitors to the hotel because otherwise they're not going to come to my hotel or any other hotel if, they, if all the events are gone. Um, so I think that's a, a, a reasonable consideration if there are extra funds in GLP. Council, what's, uh, what's the consensus about that idea about using those GLP funds to promote uh, events that might bring visitors when we get to that point in the recovery process? Councilor Linville. Um, I know that, I think the spokesman, I think it was the spokesman um, offered marketing grants to businesses. Um, I don't know how restrictive they were about determining how they might be utilized. Um, and given that we uh, it's very uncertain about whether we're going to have any events. Um, I, I wonder about whether there is a, a need for maybe a, instead of doing a second round as with the same criteria of, of waiting a, a little bit and, do, and offering marketing grants um, to any of any of those businesses that would be. Um, uh, you know, th that would be uh, uh, um, hospitality, recreation, food. Um, it would take a little bit of work, I think, to decide how to structure that, but um, certainly, certainly we have enough money to offer those and let individual businesses do what they need to do for their own businesses. <laughs> And I would recognize that a lot of those uh, enterprises are not inside the city of Wilsonville, but, but uh, the tourism uh, committee has always recognized that. That's why we have someone from Aurora Colony on, have had uh, someone from Langdon Farms on that board is because they know they're the ones who are drawing them to get the heads in beds who are, where all the beds are in Wilsonville. But they're coming for these other uh, attractions. And so, and, and so the, the, the tourism committee from the beginning has always recognized that's what we're marketing. Look at our own website. We're not marketing very much in Wilsonville. We're marketing the stuff outside of Wilsonville um, because there's nowhere to stay out there. They all have to stay in Wilsonville. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I mean, that is one thing to consider is that if we did that, held that in reserve, um, for whatever it makes most sense, but it is it is those attractions right outside our doorstep that bring the heads into the beds. Thank you, uh, Councillor West. Uh, I guess I'll make. The, uh, we talked about a bunch of different options here. I guess my preference is is we originally staying with kind of the heart of what we were doing and the goal and the aim that we were focusing on was to provide immediate relief um, to these businesses. And we have, we were trying to be cautious and couldn't include everybody and we still can't. Uh, but I think we heard um, a plea from those, at least from one of the 
the other hotel owners. And I think that if the money is there and we have extra of it, we should really consider including those other hotels and allowing, even if it's maybe it's late, maybe we need to say it's less money. But even if we included the other three hotels, we still have money left over um, and for those TLT dollars. And I think it would be cheap. Um, the, the 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 woman who made the who came before us and spoke and her employee who came and spoke I think they made a really good um, pitch to why they should be able to be considered for that and so I'd like us to maybe consider um, including them and I know that the chamber would also back that same notion as to include all the hotels within the city. Well, we've got six hotels in the city, I believe, and if we were going to try to maintain parity, then that would involve distributing some to all six, it seems to me. Um, I Three haven't really received touch. anything. Pardon me? Three have received nothing from us, and we're told that they didn't qualify. Right, but they have received grants, and we said that part of the qualification for this was not having received a grant previously uh, during the coronavirus. So changing that whole parameter changes the whole structure somewhat. Uh, we need to decide to either not decide right now or to decide something if it's the will of the council right now. Councilor Ackerwell. I, I agree that there is going to be a um, need for the marketing and, and creating buzz and, um, you know, things like that once, once it is within the framework of what's safe and allowed and, um, you know, fits within the guidelines that we have all been given, um, the regulations. I do, though, I, I pause a little on changing, I guess, the, the direction that, that we're going when I feel like there was such an effort to have discussion and, um, you know, the public was aware that we were going to be discussing this, um, so they had a chance to sit in and, and weigh in on the um, conversation and be listening to the conversation. Um, so I guess, you know, Councillor Linville's original idea of do we do we do a second call? Um, maybe was there somebody out there, despite the, I think the very earnest efforts that staff put to, um, to publicize the program, but was there somebody that, that didn't have the information or couldn't get to it in time? Do we follow that so we're, we're carrying forward the material that we have all already decided on? Um, I wonder if that makes sense. And then if there isn't anybody from that call, then, well, we need to sit down and go through a process again to look at how this money should be used. Um, and several, you know, ideas could be presented. I don't know. Well, the question, I guess, is whether council is ready to make this decision now or whether we would defer it to later, recognizing that there will be a, a amount of money unspent from what had been intended for this round from TLT funds. So uh, it's up to the council what they would like to do. <clears throat> Councilor Lindell, you yeah. had your hand up earlier. Yeah, may I ask a question of Jordan? Do you know the total number of restaurants that uh, met the the um, that are less than 20 em or 20 or less employees? Um, what that total number was that that would be the the pool that we could have gotten applications from? I think it's about, um, so there's about 60 restaurants. Um, I actually pulled these numbers for the last meeting. Um, 
there's about we have 77 hospitality businesses and 22 of those have above 20 employees. So about 78% have below 20 employees. Um, that also includes some of the entertainment, recreation businesses in town. I can get you the exact number, but I think it's around maybe um, 40, under 40. And we had from your chart, we had about 40 apply, correct? Yes. Or we had 40 awarded? Uh, I, I mean, I'm trying to decide whether it would be worth going out. If we've already gotten all of the applicants that are possible, then there's no point in going out for a second um, round. Then, I mean, I'm not... I'm, I wouldn't be ready at this point. I'd, I'd like to consider and, and come up with some recommendations about what we would do with any of the extra funds. So what additional information would council need from staff in order to feel they are equipped to make a decision at, at some point in the future? What, what would you want to know that you don't know now? Councilor West. <laughs> I had a question about the numbers too. You talked about the application deadline um, being cut off um, on that date in March. And are there any new businesses that have recently established and they were just newly established? And can you guys hear me okay? Okay, good. Um, that there's recently established and they decided to come and build a business in Wilsonville, but um, for whatever reasons, maybe they didn't get cut off or maybe they are willing to establish their business license in Wilsonville. Were there a lot of people that were cut off or that barely missed the edge or it was razor thin, they just didn't qualify? Do we have a number of people that hit that mark that were close but not quite there to qualify, maybe the business license or another criteria? Uh, yes, there were a handful of businesses that were above the 20, or of restaurants that were above the 20 full-time employee mark. So between 20 and 40, I would say. Are you asking about the business license application deadline of March 1? That was one of my ideas. Like maybe it was that was a thing that was razor that caused somebody to, to teeter to not qualify, or maybe another criteria like what Jordan's mentioning. Just those, they just barely missed it to the mark on what we were asking. There were a couple for both. So there were a couple that didn't miss the deadline for the March one cutoff, um, and there were a couple that had full-time employee counts above above 20. And while we were talking, I counted the restaurants that res that are. Um, recommended to receive a grant through TLT, and it's about 35 of the 38 businesses. So the vast majority of them are, are restaurants. In my view, the difficulty of loosening those restrictions for a few businesses who might make it is that there might be other businesses who self-selected and said, you know, well, we just don't qualify, so we're not going to submit. So if you if you go to ones that you eliminated because they didn't quite make the deadline or they didn't quite make the employee count, then you are not really being equitable with the ones that treated the criteria candidly and, and honestly and just said, well, you know, it's just not going to work for me, so I'm not going to submit. So this is where I think we expose ourselves to being challenged about how fair we're being in the process if we're not awfully, awfully careful how we do this. Councillor Lehan. And, and that's why my first suggestion was to not change any criteria or anything, but just slightly increase the um, amount for the rest of the TLT um, applicants. Um, not uh, still maintain the whole hotel, so we wouldn't give more to the Clackamas County hotels because we're trying to do equity between Washington and Clackamas County. But the rest of the TLT pool, we could just slightly increase the share because it turns out we have more. Um, and, you know, $2,000 is not a lot for a restaurant that's been closed all this time. So, um, uh, so that would seem like the simplest thing if we were 
if we really wanted to move that $57,000 out the door tomorrow, that's the easiest way without changing any of our rules. They've all qualified. We're just, before we said it was gonna be just this much, now it turns out it can be slightly more. Um, that would be the easiest thing to do. So, but I'm fine with waiting and thinking about it if that's what people wanna do. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Vance, can you tell us how many $2,000 awardees are within that category and how many $4,000 awardees within those qualifying categories? Yes, can you- Better hospitality. So how many, how many qualifying 2,000 and 4,000 with TLT? Um, how many, yeah. How many do you have on your waiting list? There was only, uh, let me pull up my. How many people are in the lottery to get funding? Uh, uh, 51. That's all urban or old businesses though. Okay. Um, I have it in my presentation. I can pull up the slide, Mayor. That doesn't tell you whether there are two or four. Uh, does this slide answer your there question? You so we have three, 1,000 for TLT, 15, 2,000, and 24,000. And. Get served most of yours. If you give everybody another 1,000. Yeah. You could just give everybody in that category another $1,000. Wouldn't that just pretty much wipe out what's left? No. That would be that would be thirty eight thousand dollars, right? Twenty plus fifteen plus three, and it yeah, gives yeah. them a thousand dollars. Doesn't get any cleaner than would be or simpler to administer than that. So we don't have to identify a new program, market it, and do all the stuff that we had to do. Um, if if you wanted to do that, that would be easy for us to do. All right, so council, do we all understand that, that uh, the $38,000, uh, no, it's 57,000 is TLT that's- We're mixing up the numbers, 57 is TLT. Yeah. Close enough. 57 is TLT. And then you can keep the rest in, in uh, reserve. So if you want to increase each grant amount by 1,000, then that would leave whatever, 57 minus 38, 19,000. That'll leave 19,000 19, left in TLT then. Yes which you could use for marketing or some other purpose in the future. So if council understands that is an option, so it seems to be that, you know, that would be a way to distribute most of the surplus DLT funds now to the qualifying businesses that have uh, submitted their applications, you know, or we could set it aside and make a decision later, you know, with an intent to find a suitable uh, use to, to uh, be a tourism related uh, event. Uh, Mr. West. <clears throat> Can't hear Mr. West, is he there? You can, oh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, if procedural question, if we were going to, uh, we would do, do we just make an amendment to the original motion if we wanted to take action tonight to give every this additional business a thousand dollars from the TLT side? No, you, or there's, there's, do we, there's, go ahead. There's no how, original how do we, motion. We, but, go ahead. There's no original motion on the floor. Someone would need to make a motion tonight if that's what they want to have happen. Correct. Okay, Your Honor, I move to give each TLT recipient an additional $1,000 and keep the additional funds that are left over in reserves for future use for um, business relief. Thank you. Is there a second? I want to... Never mind. I'll second. Okay, before, uh, before, before you get, in, second, before uh, you get discussion. into discussion, Mayor, before you get into discussion, the way I heard that motion was that you would put the, res the rest in reserve for business relief. That's different than what I was hearing Councillor Lehan say. So you'll just want to be aware that uh, Councillor West is recommending that that 19,000 be set aside for future business relief, not for future marketing. 
unless he wants to amend it. Aye. So does the maker of the motion wish to modify the motion? Yeah, I'll modify it to um, be used for future um, TLT uses. That's good enough. That's good enough. Uh, that, is that close? That's understandable. Good. That, no, I'm trying to get Councilor Lee hands. She's good. That's good. Okay. okay. Does the second agree with that? Yes, I'll agree with that. Okay. So now you've got a motion that's slightly different. Uh, discussion. This is where the person that makes the motion would normally argue for their own motion. <laughs> uh, I, I think that um, uh, it's a clean and easy way to allow us to and equitably um, deal with the additional funds and it harkens back to our original intent and that was to provide immediate relief. It's not overly complicated. Time is of the essence. Um, and, uh, I do. I did really um, appreciate Councillor Linville's uh, perspective about should we go out a second time. But unfortunately, with time being the essence and the complication of that, um, it doesn't seem as practical. And I think I get the um, and the vibe, and I get the feeling that the most of the council finds this as a palatable and um, reasonable solution to the problem. Thank you. Uh, the second, Councilor Ackerwald, would you like to comment? Well, I agree with many of those things. Um, and I, as I understand from Jordan Vance that, in fact, to go out for a second call may not be beneficial because those businesses just don't exist um, with the criteria that we've already spent, discussed at length and um, looked through. So now we have that information, which is helpful. Um, and good, and thank you to Councillor Linville for helping pinpoint, um, you know, that question there. I think that um, obviously the need for these businesses, um, you know, extend beyond one thousand, two thousand, and four thousand dollars, and um, so it, it it makes sense um, to me, and it is still in the spirit and the vein of what we have discussed previously. Um, in trying to get funding and support and um, some relief to our very smallest businesses that maybe haven't seen a lot of um, support and don't have as much flexibility in the capital um, that they that they do have right now. So um, I I think that this could be a good direction to go in. Thank you, Councilor Lehan. Um, yes, there's always a danger of doing math on the fly, especially for someone like me, but, um, and I don't want to argue against what I previously mentioned because I'm fine with this motion and with the 19 being held in reserve for future need in, uh, in uh, hospitality uh, marketing. But it looks to me like if you wanted, if you, if we wanted to push it all out there, it's fifteen hundred dollars. Now, each, yeah, it's exactly fifteen hundred. Wow. How, how many? Uh, That's what it looks like to me. I, Nineteen thousand divided by thirty-eight, they each get another five hundred. So I'm just saying. I, I will amend my motion again. And if you want to push it right on out there or not. Let's look at the math here and be sure. So you're saying. Oh, make sure it's right. My iPhone calculator is with Councillor Lehan. 1500 is 57,000. Wow. 38 times 1500 is 57,000. There you go. Wow. So I will. Um, amend my motion to uh, that every business that is approved for TLT grants will receive $1,500 additional uh, with no additional funds left over to go to TLT, future marketing. Are we absolutely certain that when you say every business that we're talking about 38? Sure. Yeah, is that correct? Am I understanding that's correct, right? Yes, it's 38 businesses that applied 
for a loan, and then on then there's three hotels on top of that, it's which brings us to the 41 number. Yeah. Okay. So I will so, clarify the 38 businesses that are approved for grant funds, not including the hotels, for additional $1,500 um, with no leftover funds for marketing dollars in the future uh, for TLT. So does the second want to endorse that? Yes. I think we, we got some providence uh, in the. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, no I'm kidding. Kidding. Yes. <laughs> we have an amended motion and a second from Council uh, from Councilor West and a second from Councilor Ackerval. Uh, additional discussion at this point. Yeah, sounds right. Mm -hmm. Councilor Lindell. Um, I, it just. Um, I think the need is now. Um, and if and if there are dollars there, then um, I think I think that this is the the right thing to do. Um, the monies are there, and we hoped that we would get uh, the applications in. It looks like we've probably gotten the majority of what we would get, and not really uh, reasonable to go out for a second round. And uh, I I think this is. It's nearly providential, so uh, that the money comes out. <laughs> it's very crazy, it's but I wild. think it's great. Yeah, it's just great. It's great. It's nice to have yeah. it happen that way. Okay, other discussion? We're done discussing. I will call for the vote. All in favor of the motion to distribute an extra $1,500 to each of the 38 businesses that qualify under TLT, uh, other than the three hotels. Uh, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Councilor West, raising your hand. Aye. There yep, we go. I'm saying, aye. can you hear me? Aye. Yes. Uh, I hear all of the council saying aye on that, so that passes uh, unanimously. And uh, what's next? Lottery. So the lottery is next. Are there any questions from council on the lottery? process. Any questions from council? All right, so let's proceed then. All right, I'll bring up my colleague Andy Stone here one second. So I think we can can kick off here. So Andy's going to help me facilitate the uh, Google random number generator. So as you can see, the range is between 1 and 51. Um, each business in the 0.3 category is assigned a number between 1 and 51. We have those sheets in front of us. Uh, so you can see every time Andy clicks generate, it comes up with a random number. So we can go ahead and get started. I'll keep track of which um, I, I won't. Uh, say the name of the business, um, but I will uh, track them on a spreadsheet, and then this week we'll be able to release the um, a summary of the entire program. So with that, I think we can start right, off. We've, Go ahead. We've seen a random number uh, flipping from one to the next to the next to the next, so we need to have a clear delineation of when you are starting. Yeah, so those, sorry, those were all tests just to show how, how the tool works. So at this point, we will go ahead and start and select our first award recipient for, uh, for the lottery. Okay, here we go. All right, number 10 is a $4,000 grant. Okay. Number 28 is a $2,000 grant. Number one is a $2,000 grant. Number 19 is a $2,000 grant. Uh, 28 is a duplicate. We can pick again. Okay. Number 16 is a $2,000 grant. 36 is a $1,000 grant. 10 is a duplicate. We can pick again. 
16 is a duplicate. Okay. 35 is a $4,000 grant, uh, and we have a t balance of $21,000 at this point. Okay. 41 is a $2,000 grant. 10 is a duplicate. 12 is a $4,000 grant. And the balance is $15,000 at this point. 16 is a duplicate. 43 is a $4,000 grant. 47 is a $2,000 grant. We're down to the, the final $9,000. Number three is a $4,000 grant. We have $5,000 left. 36 is a duplicate. 50 is a $2,000 grant. We have $3,000 left. $25 is a $2,000 grant. We have $1,000 left. Three is a duplicate. Four is a $2,000 grant, so we can fund 50% of that. And that concludes the lottery. So let me count up how many more grants we have here. So we have 15 more grants through the lottery process, totaling $38,000. So what is our total, total number of awards in both uh, TLT and URA funds? Let's start my video. Uh, so I can tally these up. It looks like it's about 15 more grants uh, that are funded by Urban Renewal. So add that to the tally of, uh, let me just pull it up. So prior it was 69 grants, so that's what, 79, about 80, 84 total grants funded by Urban Renewal for general business, um, amounting to $200,000. Total number of grants in all? Total number of grants in all would be uh, 110, uh, 15, around 125. 84 and 38, three. So we had 110 with the prior to the lottery, including the hotels. And then if we add these final 15, that'd bring us to about one, 125. 125. All right. Uh, that pretty much is the whole enchilada, isn't it? Yes. Uh, that's it. That concludes the presentation, and we will be busy this week uh, processing the checks and sending out the letters. To make a motion to. So, unless you have any other questions, that concludes my presentation. Well, they did their motion for this, so we're good. Thank you. Mr. Cosgrove, is there any additional that we need to do? No, we were talking about whether you needed to do a motion for this, but you don't because you've already done a motion for the program and you did a motion for what you're going to do with the uh, 57,000. So I think we're good. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Interesting stuff. Um, All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Vance. Appreciate it. I don't have the amended agenda in front of me because I don't have it on my computer here. Um, citizen input. Citizen input. And do we have any citizen input to entertain, either uh, present or on the video? No. Either one? Neither. Okay. Um, so. I won't read the whole uh, formal wording then if we have nobody in the queue. Uh, that brings us to the Councilor comments, liaison reports, and any other announcements. And I would ask Councilor President Ackerball if you have anything at this time. All right, thank you. Um, I think 
like the rest of you, I've just um, had some Zoom meetings. <laughs> Zoom's played a big role in my life for the last several weeks. Um, a variety of different types of Zoom meetings, I guess. I, I met with um, a scout troop and spoke with them for a while. Last week, last Monday, um, was very impressed with the thoughtful questions they had around our current situation and um, including what youth can do now um, when the demands on everyone is very different than what we've um, you know, lived through before this, this whole experience. Um, I also last Monday attended the Willamette Intake Facility Commission meeting and represented um, Wilsonville there. We approved the annual work plan and budget as well as um, set the meeting schedule for the upcoming year. And that went smoothly. Actually, not through Zoom, but through another virtual platform. So, um, I also attended two um, Zoom meetings from um, Clackamas County Business Alliance. That they've done a series of several different um, subjects, and I attended one where Senator Wyden spoke, and one where Senator Merkley spoke, um, which I thought were both well put together and good to hear their thoughts, um, specifically as it pertains to the business community in Clackamas County. And I've also been attending the LOC weekly calls, um, conference calls, and just wanted to mention that I feel the content on those calls are, it's very helpful and they've been, they've been very good um, calls and I know staff's been sending out a summary too for us, so thank you staff for for doing that because I've appreciated um, the information shared during those calls. You kind of get a, a different look from governor's office and health authority and office of emergency management. So kind of a lot of the different um, layers in the response right now. And um, that's what I expect for the future is more Zoom calls. <laughs> So that's about it for me for right now. Thank you very much. Dr. Lehan. Well, it's my, my turn already. <laughs> um, yes, well, I, I've been uh, involved in the, the last couple of weeks. I've been trying to get a uh, grant application in for, um, which has been a, a challenge on behalf of the um, Wilsonville Boone's Ferry Historical Society and the Butteville Cemetery for monuments for Jesse Boone and his family who are currently in unmarked graves in Butteville. Now, uh, we've been working on this in one way and another for the last year, but coming to the end of trying to get two different organizations in the middle of a pandemic uh, coordinated and, and research and meetings going back and forth and <clears throat> Uh, that has been challenging, but we did get the uh, grant application submitted on pretty much the last day. So uh, that's important both to Wilsonville and to Butteville. And um, I, I think it will be a good joint project if we can, if we're successful. Um, Ordinarily, this time of the year is uh, cemetery season, uh, getting ready for Memorial Day, and um, and there there are work crews and um, Clackamas County um, uh, corrections work crews that we that we have, as well as volunteer work crews. Well, we're having no work crews. <laughs> there, there's nobody getting together to do work and uh, so we're just kind of limping along. I, I ended up canceling the Boy Scouts who usually come out and do the uh, flag placements on Memorial Day and we will probably end up canceling the American Legion guys who come out and do the poppies, which they have to assemble beforehand. Anyway, 
so my board has been back and forth trying to figure out what best to do for Memorial Day, how to keep things safe and how much sanitizer and where we're going to have it and how much we're going to monitor things. Uh, so it's it's been a strange season, um, but uh, we'll, we will try to have a good Memorial Day, even though we will not have much in the way of gatherings <laughs> for work or otherwise. So... Um, uh, it's just uh, just one of those things. It's a it's definitely a unique season, and so that's about all I had of what I've been doing. Thank you very much, Councilor West. Uh, hi everyone, and make sure you make sure my phone's not muted. Um, I uh, want to first take a second to thank all of the Wilsville citizens because as I go to the grocery store to stock up on the cupboards and restock the cupboards, and I um, and go out there like other people do when they have to, um, I've really seen great behavior. I've seen people be gracious with one another. I've seen people wearing masks, being cautious of social distancing, um, even when taking running out to get the mail and Amber came by and they waved at me from a distance and waited for me to pass before they passed me, just being very cautious, being really good citizens and trying to take care of one another, being thoughtful and mindful during this time. So I really appreciate um, seeing those good behaviors. Uh, and, you know, never, we're not perfect, but I see people trying, and I appreciate that. Um, we're looking out for everybody else's, everyone's well-being, including your own, and I would advocate that we continue to do that. Um, I lost my video, but I... Are you okay? Yeah. Oh, we can. Says I'm, mute, says I'm muted. Okay, I'm not muted now. I'm um, sorry. So I mean, another thing that I've been doing that has been kind of fun just to continue to advocate for the business communities and highlight things that are special in Wilsonville. Myself and uh, Kyle Bunch, who's on the chamber board and is a small business owner, has created this thing called Wilsonville Wednesdays, where we, just with our smartphone and doing social distancing, have been going out and interviewing and doing fun, innovative videos that highlight a business or something unique within Wilsonville. Uh, the first one we did was with Innovative Dance, and you can see it on social media. It's gotten two, 3,000 views already locally, um, and it is promoting that business and then um, you see Kyle tap dancing with the owner they're doing social distancing and we're trying to be aware of that we just filmed a video at Al's Home and Garden where we were doing a promotion for Al's Home and Garden right before Mother's Day um, and uh, promoting that business and why they decided to do business here it's kind of fun and whimsical and then today we filmed one with uh, we're doing a video with the different nonprofits and, the, and how they're supporting Wilsonville and also faith communities and there's a lot of fun um, and got some insights on how this pandemic in our community is affecting young people, youth specifically, um, and our different people and different people throughout the, uh, the lifespan, and just trying to find ways to be fun and give some people some content and promote that, you know, this business is still open. So we're getting requests now from all kinds of people to come do these videos for them. And so that's been a lot of fun just to be able to kind of keep people plugged together and promote community um, while also practicing social distancing. So it's kind of been something active that creative that we've been doing and I, uh, it's been getting a great response. So watch out for Wilsonville Wednesdays. Um, it'll be posted all over the local social media pages and, and whatnot, so. All right, since you, uh, your picture is frozen again, but uh, you stopped talking, so I presume you are done, Mr. West. Uh, I am done. Thank you. Councilor Linville. Uh, well, I, I wanted to um, thank Jordan for um, and the staff for all they've done um, and the volunteers who did all of the phoning for our small business uh, relief grants. That that was an incredible outreach uh, and uh, and I and I think uh, pretty incredible for the amount of time that we were um, give it, we've given to get this whole project off the ground. So, so kudos to the staff for all of that, and Brian for his leadership. Um, I I think uh, as we move a little bit farther down the line, I know the governor said that 
we uh, that she was um, extending the emergency, the stay home, stay healthy um, uh, plan until the end of July. But I heard that the caveat that she said in both in her um, press conference um, and from the LLC governor uh, office representative was that um, that could be changed. And I think the intent was to allow cities and other jurisdictions to not get caught um, like we are right now where the um, the deadline was coming to an end and, and we needed to make some decisions. So um, I, I think we can anticipate, uh, I think it's, it's good for us to anticipate that perhaps things might change in the next month or two. One of the things that I am uh, concerned about is what um, I understood is happening in the city of Salem and that um, there are a couple of businesses that are opening against the governor's order. Um, I think there's one hair salon and I think there's a nail salon that is also opening up. And I, I think we need to be prepared uh, for that, uh, should that happen. In, um, in our community and how we would handle that. I know that it is a, a violation that the state would, um, that the state would have to enforce rather than the city, but it seems to me that we would, uh, the city would be involved in some way. So I'm hoping that we have some contingency plans there should that happen here. And I guess the only other thing is that I, I don't think it's too early for us to start to think about recovery and what would that look like. I know, I, I'm assuming that Brian, uh, that um, Mr. Cosgrove's uh, team um, is, is shifting to that direction. And it would be helpful from my perspective to uh, hear from the staff a plan for um, recovery um, as as those things kind of move. Um, what what would we do? How would we do them? And how would it impact city business? I know that there's some issues out there about um, opening. If we got the word tomorrow that our uh, city uh, services could open. How would we do that? And um, what would be, we, we might have to have a physical change in some of the, the way we do things. And so it would be good to know um, how, how, what we would have. And so as we kind of look a little forward, it might be nice to have a, a, a recovery plan um, for both for our own services and how we might do um, some of that recovery and opening opening up in the city. So I have a, um, I have not had any meetings except I did, I have attended the Friday LLC uh, telephone uh, meetings and I would agree with Councillor Ackerval that those are excellent. Um, I, I think if you have an opportunity to sit, listen in, I mean, we get that perspective from the national level all the way down to emergency management. So it's really, it's really great. Um, and then the only other thing I have going on is that I have a French Prairie Forum meeting that will be coming up next week. Um, so I will report on that at the next meeting. All right. Thank you all for uh, continuing on in the face of the challenges that we have. Uh, we have uh, a little bit of other business to do here, which we need to probably take care of. So I will ask for the consent agenda to be, to be read, please. Resolution number 2798, a resolution of the city of Wilsonville authorizing the city manager to execute a professional services agreement with Corolla engineers to provide engineering consulting services for the wastewater treatment plant, ma plant master plan project. Thank you. Is there a motion on consent agenda? Councilor Lindvall. Uh, Your Honor, I move that we approve the consent agenda as read. Thank you. Is there a second? 
Okay. Your Honor, I'll second. Uh, second, first of all, from Councillor Ackerwall, uh, and then again by Mr. West. All in favor, please say aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 Uh, unanimous 5-0. Thank you very much. Bringing us to new business of which there is none. And then to continuing business with ordinance number 841 on second reading. Ordinance number 841, second reading. An ordinance of the city of Wilsonville adopting text amendments to the Wilsonville Comprehensive Plan and Development Code regarding the plan development residential PDR and residential R zones. Staff is here if you have any questions, but there's no prepared presentation, Mayor. Kim, I think. Okay, I have seen a couple of emails of public input on this. Is staff prepared to outline those for us? Yeah, we can do that. You want to come up, Dan? Yeah. You just want us to address the emails, right? No, just tell us what we what the input consists of, essentially. Okay. And Kim, those emails are in the record, correct? Good evening, Dan Pauley, Planning Manager. Uh, so the main comment was uh, supportive of it. Uh, however, some concerns about smaller sites, uh, and I've clarified with that resident that it didn't apply in the situations he feared. It he feared it may. Uh, it only applies to subdivisions, which by definition are four or more lots, or multifamily developments, which is three or, three or more units uh, as currently defined. So, you know, if you're building a single family home on existing lot or a duplex on existing lot, it doesn't apply, uh, which was his main concern. Okay. Uh, and it, any other emails or just that? That was the only one that I've seen. Okay. Uh, any questions for staff? Council? Councilor Linville? Mr. Polly, I, I, I have, I know I've asked this question before and you've, and you've answered it, but I just, I need you to jog my memory again. Um, on the red line version of the ordinance 841, exhibit A, page D17, we go in sequence by the number of units from zero to zero to 12, and then it jumps from 16 to 20 with the gap in between 13, 14, and 15. Tell me again why there is that gap. It, it relates to what is actually there. So we, early in the planning commission process, we, we contemplated the idea of filling those gaps, but it's really would be an academic exercise because it's related to the conference of plan. So there's nothing with those densities uh, designated on the conference of plan. Uh, so it's not needed essentially. So the idea is if for some reason okay. uh, the council felt in the future that a new urban area should have that designation as part of that work to annex and rezone that we would adopt essentially a, a code amendment to put that in if at, ever needed, but we don't anticipate that ever being needed. So yes, for someone that's very, loves math and wants things clean, it's not real clean in that way, but it's practical. It matches what's on our zoning map and what's usable based on what we have today and what we anticipate in the future. Okay. And then I think we've talked about this before too. Um, in the new definition of the gross area, um, the gross area is has subtracted the area of the SROZ and the Bonneville easement. But then it gets when it back in in the in the in section four. And I don't, I don't want to belabor this. It's just a question that I just need to understand. In section 4.113, mm -hmm. uh, the standards to apply, uh, applying to residential development zone, then it gets, the SROZ gets added back in as part of the open space uh, ca um, calculation at, at 12 and a half, it can be used as 12 and a half percent of the open space requirement. So 
I'm I'm it, it just a little confused about we, we take it out in the growth calculation, but we add it in when we are looking at open space. Sure. Is and, that just? Yeah, and there's a diagram in there that uh, illustrates this. I mean, the idea is, I think it's first helpful to understand that there are two separate calculations, really, that the gross development yeah. area yeah. is really designed to calculate where where units can actually go. Uh, and because that was already defined, it's helpful uh, to really, and to be consistent across the code to use it in terms of calculating open space, but open space doesn't necessarily have to be within it. So uh, it could, uh, which in essence allows uh, value to, economic value to the open space where you're able to use that to count as the required open space, which frees up more of the limited land that's not, um, that is not that is not open space for development at the same time providing those close by natural open areas or active areas uh, that have been expressed as a desire by the community and the council so to clarify the 25 percent that's the requirement for the open space half of that can be the SROZ correct correct okay all right, and then here's my last question. This is the last one, um, and it has to do with the um, uh, the table that is the PDR zoning designation and maximum and minimum densities. And I get I get that you're tr that you're trying to get at the 80 percent in the minimum density. Okay, I, I, I get that. But it comes out to such, it works really good in the 16 to 20 because it comes out to an even number and it comes out in even numbers in other places. But the minimum density per acre for, for like two or three of those, three of those areas comes out to be like 2.4 units. And I think I asked this before, would we round up or would we round down or is this a moot point or how, how do we, I mean, we end up with a great calculation with 80%, but then we end up with these odd numbers in the number of units per acre. Sure, and first of all, you're usually not calculating on 10 acres. You're usually calculating on like 2.3 or 4.7 acres. So. Either way, okay. even if they were nice clean numbers, you'd end up rounding. Uh, and that said, there is specific language in the code about how to round. Uh, we went into that in quite detail because historically it has come up as a common question. Obviously, uh, developers are looking yeah. for a, the, to maximize the number of units oftentimes. And so to be, the code is entirely clear on how to do that, So, uh, which is a rounding down. Uh, to the nearest okay. whole unit. Okay. I didn't see that. Oh, I see that it is. Yes, I do see it. The number rounded down to the nearest whole number. Okay, I see that now. So on the next page. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. Other questions for staff? If there's no questions further, uh, if it pleases the council, what would you like to do uh, with whatever our ordinance number here it is on second reading? 841. Number 841 on second reading. Councilor Ackerman. Mm -hmm. I move to approve ordinance number 841 on second reading. Thank you, is there a second? Councilor Lehan, second. I, I, I will second it. All right. Uh, motion and a second. Any discussion needed at this point? Uh, my only uh, dis discussion would be to um, recognize that uh, that the person who has commented on it um, several times, I, I believe, is Garrett Pryor. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And I, I just want to recognize that he has followed this through uh, many phases and really tried to be as helpful as he could be and supportive of it. And I just wanted to recognize that and thank him for his involvement. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, very good comment. I've read his uh, detailed uh, analyses at several different points, and I think it's very helpful. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Uh, if not, I will call for a roll call vote at this time on the motion uh, to approve Ordinance 841 on second reading. Councillor Linville? Yes. Councillor West? Yes. Council President Ackerval? Yes. Councilor Lehan? Yes. Mayor Knapp? Yes. Passes unanimous, five to nothing. <clears throat> and that then will bring us to no public hearings. Uh, Mr. Cosgrove, I guess we're kind of down to the wrap here. Okay, so I'll be quick. Uh, just as a reminder, we talked about it earlier, but uh, we don't have anything for the agenda for the next meeting, so the May 18th council meeting is canceled. Uh, we had a couple items for work session that will move forward to the June 1st meeting. And just to address Councilor Linville's um, comments during uh, council concerns, we do have a plan. I think we're about 90% through um, for reopening. We are looking to recovery. We talk about recovery at all of our incident command meetings. So uh, we're planning, looking at administrative controls and engineering controls to reopen our facilities to the public if and when we get the green light to do that. So when that plan is complete, we'll present it to council so that you understand what it is we're doing and uh, what direction we're moving in. That's all I have, Mayor. So uh, we do have uh, upcoming budget meetings. I, uh, assuming that uh, you have led uh, staff toward being prepared, even though we have a lot of uncertainty facing us here. Yeah, the, um, the budget book, I believe, is done, and I believe we're getting those on Friday, so they should be distributed in pretty short order. Um, so yeah, we we prepared the budget before all this started, so it'll be um, it'll be an interesting conversation with the budget committee and and all of you. Um, but if you read my budget message, it'll be pretty clear um, kind of what we're looking at. So I don't want to you know do any spoiler alerts right now, but we have a pretty robust uh, dialogue we'll get into. Yeah, and that'll be a uh, virtual meeting too uh, for budget committee, right? It will indeed. Okay. Um, Councilor West, question? Yeah, Brian, if we want to be involved in that budget committee process or watch it, do we need to let you know to be invited? What's the best way for us to, um, I, I like to watch it and engage as much as I possibly can as a counselor. What, what does that look like? Uh, it looks like, I'm not sure what you're asking because you're on the budget committee. Right, so, is it, so we're all meeting in a meeting like this or is yep. it? Yes, it'll be a it'll be an unwieldy uh, fifteen person Zoom meeting. So we're going to do some trial runs and okay, that's uh, what I was asking. yeah, we're going to work with uh, Andrew Carr, who's the chair, um, and I'm probably going to have to help facilitate and watch for people raising their hands and keep track of who raised their hand first. So it's going to be a it's going to be a big task to to keep make sure that we do that in a way that's. Uh, we're not losing track of conversation, so it's gonna. It, it won't be easy. Multiply what we're doing now by three. Eat. Yeah. All right. Uh, sounds good. And I was just looking for dates on that. What is it? The twenty first. Twentieth and twenty first. 20th and 21st, and then if we need to a third time on the 27th, I guess. Correct. So hopefully all of us can be available at that time along with our uh, citizen budget committee members. 
any legal business to report, Ms. Jenkinson. Just one quick note. Um, since the governor has extended her order, ours goes until May 31st, so I'm guessing at the June meeting, I will bring another resolution to you to extend our emergency order to be consistent with the governor since we're not having a meeting before then in May, but that will dovetail right after our resolution ends, so we'll be, we'll be right on time. Okay. Any other business for the good of the order? Good night. If not, thank you very much for all the work going on there in City Hall, even without us. I appreciate that. I'm going to call us adjourned at uh, 9, 12 p.m., according to my clock here, and wish you all a good evening.